In July of this year, Honorable Marlene Jennings came to Kwantlen Polytechnic University here in Surrey and Delta to have consultations and co-chair these consultations with the local stakeholders reference to the air traffic noise in Surrey and Delta area. This came out of the hard work of many local individuals, local leaders like Hannah Newman, Bob Campbell, and City of Surrey Councillor Judy Wellnew. These people have been on this issue for some time. They approached me to see how we can resolve this issue of that is a concern to the local people in Surrey and Delta by working through the committee and working with other members of parliament. When we talk about other members of parliament, the first name that came to me was Madam Marlene Jennings. Madam Marlene Jennings is, is well known uh, recently for traveling on the EI Commission and recently been appointed as an official critic for the democratic reform and government ethics. Congratulations, Marlene, and welcome and thank you for you being here. Thank you so much for be, uh, inviting me to be here with you, Souk, and I have to tell you, I had a great time with all of your constituents and uh, stakeholder groups last July. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of that process. Marlene, uh, when we talk about the air traffic noise, uh, do you see this as a public health risk? I definitely see it as an issue of public health. Um, the European Union, European community has done major scientific studies on the impact of air, um, airline uh, noise on people's health, health and it's demonstrated very clearly that it has a major impact. It increases hypertension. Um, there are a whole series of um, Ill illnesses and uh, maladies that it increases. And um, they have, some of the countries there have actually put into place more stringent uh, rules and regulations governing um, night flights, for instance, low-lying uh, flights. And um, I'm really disappointed in the current government because it's done absolutely nothing. It's my understanding that it has been an issue in, in your writing and it has been an issue across Canada. Uh, when is the first time uh, you heard from the people in, uh, in Surrey and Delta? The first time I heard from people in Surrey and Delta is about um, six or seven months ago. Um, I, was in, I did some research as to whether or not there were any citizen groups that were established outside of Quebec that were working on this issue and advocating for more stringent laws and regulations because we do have such a group in Quebec. It's called the uh, Citizens for Equality of Life. And um, I then came in contact with some. I talked to you and you identified, for instance, Hannah's group for me and talked to me about how the city of Surrey had done some major work on this. And um, that's when we kind of like started collaborating on it. Uh, I mean, you said that you have been in touch with, uh, with the Surrey residents, but when it comes to those people, the same uh, uh, community leaders, they are telling me uh, that they have tried to contact the government, but uh, they have had no response, uh, reference to this issue. Uh, what do you think about uh, uh, this? I'm not surprised, Souk. I'm not surprised at all that this conservative government has been stonewalling citizens about this entire issue. I've written letters to the Minister of Transport. The Minister of Transport's response has been, that's the airport authorities, um, uh, ballywhack. We don't have anything to do with it. Excuse me? The government is the one that puts forward legislation, adopts legislation, amends legislation. So if the government had any interest in 
Canadians' health, they would be looking at the current legislation and determining that it needs to be changed. They're not doing that. They're literally just, you know, sloughing us off with the, you know, wave of a hand, it's not important, deal with the airport authorities. I think that Canadians' health is too important to leave it to 13, 14, well, international airports, 13 different bodies. But again, I mean, when we see the Canadian government that has failed on, on this issue, uh, but it's my understanding, you know, other governments in, in Europe and also uh, here in Seattle, they have been uh, in contact with the stakeholders and they have come up with solutions. Uh, are you aware of uh, any such uh, solutions? Yes. In, for instance, in uh, the state of Washington where Seattle, uh, their international airport is located, they've actually put limit on the flights and the times that they can fly, when, when, when they have to stop flying a, a, in the evening, when they can start up again in the morning, the weight of the planes, um, if they change the corridors. There's a whole process now that's by law and regulations for consultation. We don't have that here. Each individual airport authority, so for instance, in Montreal, the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Airport Authority can decide if it wants to consult the public or not. We can't force them. Same thing in Toronto, same thing in Vancouver. That's not right. We're, you know, we're citizens wherever we are in this country and we should be able to expect the same level of regulation and the same conditions and protections for our health regardless of where we live. So you, in other means, you're saying that uh, the Canadian government should uh, take a, a, an active role uh, to resolve this issue. I do, and I've had a motion um, tabled in the House for some time now that calls on the government to issue a moratorium on night flights out of all of our airports that are located in densely populated areas until the government conducts a true and meaningful public consultation on the issue of the environmental health um, and economic I impacts of night flights. So when we see, you, you have talked about night, night flights. Yes. And, and people are complaining when it comes to Surrey and Delta. Uh, there are also cargo flights uh, that, are, yes. that are flying in the, in the middle of the night. So what will be your views on, on that particular uh, issue? I think that, that that would be part of the consultation. That's why I added on the issue of economics. There are businesses, for instance, in my riding, Dorval, the airport is located in the city of Dorval, and I've had businesses say that they need to have be able to be able uh, to be able to fly their goods out at night in order to remain competitive. My point has always been put the facts on the table. The fa scientific facts about health impacts, scientific facts about environmental impacts, and the, and the facts about economic impacts. And then let the citizens make a, an informed decision. Some citizens may decide that they will allow cargo planes to continue to fly at night. They might put some restriction on it, on the actual corridor. But be, for economic reasons, because it creates jobs, would maintain jobs, they'll do that. Other citizens will decide, no, the health impacts is more important. So how do you see us moving uh, forward from here? I think that you and I have, a, have work to do with the help of the citizen groups and the elected officials, for instance, in Surrey, in my case, the city of Dorval, the uh, borough of Lachine, to continue to move this forward to try and identify other groups in other cities where this might be an issue and elected officials and begin to develop a network of support amongst, amongst each other and create that critical mass to try and force the government to do something. 